so what can you say about the matrix suppose consider a matrix a well typically we write it this way right i think you might have seen this what is this matrix of dimension n cross n okay so if it is an n cross n so i take set of all n cross n matrices is this a vector space yes so what is the dimension of that what is the dimension of set of all n cross n matrices definitely it's a vector space because we verified it for 2 cross 2 okay think of 2 cross 2 so what do you mean what is the dimension of that can you give me an example of a basis there yes ha huh? four yeah 1000000100 and 0010001 right this will be your basis right there are many other basis that you can come up with okay so that means if you have an n cross n matrix matrix or set of all n cross n matrices what is the dimension of that n square okay fine you take a matrix and now a inverse i'll write this as a inverse okay this is invertible right does not exist if there exist a vector v not equal to 0 such that a v is 0 right this is what it says okay so what is the implication of this i mean let's this is very practical okay so uh, even in data analysis uh, we want certain matrices to be invertible um, so we need to know what does that mean right so let's write this okay so let's take an example okay so let's say i have a uh, 2 cross 2 matrix okay a1 a2 Uh, i think uh, i'll write it like this a1 a2 b1 b2 okay so this is my 2 cross 2 matrix and let's say v is like let's say xy okay equal to 0 what does this mean i can write it like this right so uh, a1 x plus well uh, this is i'm little embarrassed to write these things it's like so so basic but anyway should not forget what this implies i can write this in a slightly different fashion right so what is that see i can combine these two and combine these two and add them right so what does that mean i can write a1 a2 i'll multiply it by by x right plus y times b1 b2 this is 0 0 do you agree with that right so essentially i am taking linear combinations of columns to get zero right that's what it implies what are the what are the coefficients x and y right remember x y both cannot be zero right one of them is one of them can be zero at most both cannot be zero so now what is the implication of this okay let's uh, let's look at this so it says x times a vector the first column plus y times the second column is zero that means x times the first column is negative y times the second column or first column is some scaled constant of the second column what does that mean if i think of first column as a vector the second column is some scaled version okay uh, sorry if this is like this this will be scaled version or whatever in the reverse direction what does that mean what can you say about these two vectors linearly dependent right so um, yeah so it's linearly dependent therefore you cannot invert that is one thing right so we cannot a inverse does not exist if this happens this happens what does that mean that's equivalent to the columns are linearly dependent so you should always ensure that the columns are linearly independent that's one thing what about uh, rows hmm what can you say about the rows so let me make that first observation okay so a inverse does not exist if columns of a columns of a are linearly dependent okay one thing 
Okay, so for n cross n matrix, the column, so each vector is of size n, right? So you have n vectors. So they have to be linearly independent. So if they are linearly independent, it spans Rn. So it should form a basis. Essentially, if you have an n cross n matrix, if you look at the columns, columns should form a basis for Rn, right? Otherwise, there is no way by which you can invert, right? We will see, you know, if you cannot invert, what else can be done is something that we'll study a little later. But this is one guaranteed thing, okay? So what about A transpose? I mean, what about uh, the rows? Huh? What can you say about the rows? Rows are also vectors, right? Do you agree? Now, uh, what can you say about rows? Hmm? One way to look at this is if A inverse exists, right? The inverse of that should also exist, right? So you have to come back, right? Uh, so that means A inverse inverse should exist, right? Which is A, basically. So now if I apply the same argument to A inverse, what, what do you get? Nothing, right? That doesn't help you whether to, you know, what happens to the rows? So now what should I do for rows? How do you convert uh, columns to rows and rows to columns? Uh, so I should look at A transpose, right? Now, if A inverse exists, A transpose inverse exists, we don't know, right? So in other words, we need to see what is the meaning of this, right? What is the meaning of A transpose? Well, uh, meaning, meaning, uh, you know, uh, not just making rows to uh, column and columns to rows. What is the deeper meaning of A transpose? What does it mean, right? What, what kind of transformation is it, right? That is something that we will uh, have to address. But for today, I will maybe we'll uh, look at this a little later. Okay. So it turns out that if the columns are linearly independent, n cross n matrix, then the rows will also be linearly independent. So um, this leads to a definition, okay? Let I'll restrict to n cross n. Uh, one can generalize it to any matrix. Let A belong to A is an n cross n matrix. The rank of A is defined as the number of linearly independent columns. Okay, uh, which is equal to linearly independent rows, but uh, I'll just stop here because I haven't shown you why the column, the row should also be uh, linearly independent. Okay, so now if A inverse exists, then what can you say about the rank? Yes, so A inverse does not exist if columns are linearly dependent. So if A inverse exists, then definitely it should be linearly independent. Right? What does that mean? That means the rank should be n, right? So that's for sure. Okay. What about the opposite? Now the question would be if rank of A is n implies A inverse exists. Remember, uh, you know, uh, in the first class uh, we looked at a problem, right? What was that? Movie rating, right? Missing entry. So there we wanted to minimize the rank. You know what rank is, right? The number of linearly independent uh, columns. So we wanted to minimize that subject to some constraints. Now, this is another question that we should uh, uh, address uh, going forward, right? So if I address some of these, then I know when is uh, when a matrix is invertible, OK? Now, uh, the moment I say, you know, a matrix is invertible, then the next question is, how do you invert, right? Of course, as engineers, we need to know, we need to write a program that will invert the matrix. We should see how to do that. That's the next question, right? So what else, uh, what are the other questions that uh, we as engineers will be interested in? Okay, so I'll probably spend two, three minutes on that, and then I'll stop. So suppose I have this kind of uh, equation. This is, you know, there everywhere, right? A linear equation. So now, 
uh, if I want to solve this, one way is you know if a inverse exists, x a is done, right? If I know how to find the inverse, you are done. Are there any other ways of uh, doing this? Okay, suppose uh, I'll uh, suppose a is diagonal. What can you say? Suppose a is like this. Okay. 0, 0. This means except the diagonal, everything else is 0. So times x is y. So what can you say about this kind of equation? This is simple, right? So lambda 1 x1 is y1, lambda 2 x2 is y2, and so on. Lambda n xn is y n. How easy is that? Right? I can find x1 as y1 by lambda 1, x2 as y2 by lambda 2. You don't need to do anything fancy, right? Straightforward. So now, if the matrix is diagonal, I'm done, right? That's the best case scenario. Now, is there a way to see? I know how to multiply matrices. Multiplication of matrices is easy, right? And uh, even on hardware, you can uh, build efficient hardware to do the multiplication of matrices, right? So that's why you don't use for loop in MATLAB or any other program. That's why you use matrix multiplication because there are efficient implementation of that. So now, um, how do you convert a matrix into a diagonal? Suppose I say that I can write this as u, a diagonal matrix, u transpose, okay? What kind of this matrix is u? Let's say u, u transpose is u transpose u is identity. I'll come back to this again uh, soon. Suppose this is the case. Let's revisit this uh, ax equal to y. So what is a? u lambda u transpose x is y, right? What do I do? I multiply by u transpose on the left on both sides, OK? So what can you say about this? i, OK? I will call this as x tilde, OK? I'll call this as y tilde. So what kind of equation I get? Lambda times x tilde is y tilde, right? See, y tilde is easy to compute because I'm multiplying a matrix by a vector. That's all, right? So, so simple. And uh, this is the equation. Now, you know how to solve for x tilde? x tilde is easy, right? Easy to compute. Why? Because lambda is diagonal. Okay, so I think I didn't say that, right? Lambda is diagonal. This is another class now? Okay. Yeah. So now, the moment I compute x tilde, how do I find uh, x? So u transpose x is x tilde, right? What is x? I'll multiply by u on both sides. So I get u, u transpose is identity. So I get all that I have to do is multiply, right? So that's why we need to ask this question. When can I write this? Then my life will be very easy. So that's the another big question that we'll ask in this particular course, a part of this course. Okay. With this, I'll stop. Uh, we will meet. Uh, the next class.